Hello, Warbrook and Westbourne. In today's English lesson, we are going to be thinking a little bit more about the moral of the story. We started to think a little bit about the moral of the story last week. Today we're going to think about that a little bit further because once you've finished up writing your fable completely, you're going to need to write the moral and explain to the reader what they should have learned by reading your story. So usually fables provide a proverb. This is a moral at the end. This gives the reader an insight into human behaviour. It's often a lesson that the reader should learn from reading the story about what's right and what's wrong. At the end of today's lesson, you should be ready to write up the moral of your story in a way that is easy for the reader to understand. But first of all, listen to this fable and see if you can think about what the moral of the story is. The Fox and the Grapes One hot summer's day, a fox was walking through the woods. <laughs> I'm so tired, hungry, and thirsty. I can't take another step. Is there anything to eat? <laughs> the fox found a bunch of grapes from a vine. One more time. Bounce! Bounce! The fox jumped with all her might, but couldn't reach the grapes. Oh, why are they hanging so high? There might be some grapes a little lower over there. <laughs> Those grapes are not worth it! I'm sure they are sour! I'd rather be hungry than eating a bunch of sour grapes! The fox walked away and never looked back. <laughs> so, what was the moral? The moral of the fox and the grapes is that some people will dislike what they cannot achieve or have for themselves. Have you ever had something and someone else has said it's not very good? Maybe they were just jealous because they didn't have it for themselves. Have you ever felt jealous of someone because they've had something that you don't have? And have you ever maybe said something negative about it to make yourself feel a little bit better? I want you to have another listen to the story of the lion and the mouse. Think about the moral of this story. The moral to this story will be very similar to the moral of your story because it follows the same pattern of somebody helping somebody else out and being repaid by getting the help back. One day, a mighty lion, tired from hunting all morning, lay down to take a nap under a large, shady tree. Some mice that lived at the foot of the tree scrambled over the sleeping lion to return to their home. But just as the last mouse was crawling over him, the lion woke up. The lion laid his big paw on the little mouse, trapping him. The mouse was very afraid. He apologized to the lion for disturbing him and begged him to spare his life and let him go. The lion pitied the little mouse, so he lifted his paw and set the mouse free. Some time later, the lion was walking near the mouse's home. The lion accidentally stepped on a trap set by a hunter, and a net made of thick ropes captured the lion and pulled him up into a tree. The lion struggled to free himself, but could not. His angry roars rumbled through the forest as he became upset and afraid. The mouse heard the lion's cries. Remembering the lion's kindness, the
the mouse ran to the tree and climbed up to the trap. He used his sharp little mouse teeth to gnaw through the thick ropes and set the lion free. The lion and the mouse were friends forever after. Both of them had learned that it is good to help someone who... So what is the moral in this story? The moral of this story should be very similar to the moral of your innovated story because it follows the same pattern of something helping something else and then being helped back in return. Think very carefully about how you want to write about the moral of your story. There's a few different morals you could take from it. Let's have a think about some of the different morals that we can learn from the story of the lion and the mouse. And therefore, the same morals that we can learn from your fable. One of the first morals we can take from this story is that mercy brings its reward. So mercy is compassion or forgiveness. Helping someone out when they are in need. It will bring its reward. That means that they might too help you out someday or someone else. The good deed will be returned. Basically means that the good deed will be returned. If you do something kind for someone else, eventually that good deed will come back around and you will receive some goodness into your life. Another moral we can take from this story is that there is no being so small that it cannot help another being that is greater than it. Now this is a really nice moral to take from this story. It doesn't matter how small you are or how weak you might be, you can still help someone else. The last one. No act of kindness is ever wasted. So from this we mean that no matter what you do for someone else, even every small good deed that you do is never wasted. Because in the story of the lion and the mouse, the lion does an unusual good deed. He would probably usually gobble up that mouse, a delicious treat for him. But in this instance, he decided not to do that. He decided to let the mouse go. That good deed that he did was then repaid because the mouse helped him. So no act of kindness, no matter how small it may seem, is ever wasted. Think about these ideas for a moral explanation and begin to write them down. Do this on a scrap piece of paper at first and start your sentence with, the moral of my fable is, and then write down what you think. You'll need to include this at the end of your fable. So I put the three main points here for you to have a look at. Mercy brings its reward. No act of kindness is ever wasted and there is no being so small that it cannot help a greater being. I've started the sentence at the bottom. The moral of this story is that, so see if you can bring together some of those ideas and create your own sentence to explain to me what the moral of your story is. For your independent task today, you're going to write up the fourth and final page of your story map. So by the end of the lesson, you should have an entire written story of your own innovated fable. When you've finished that, I would like you to write the moral of your fable underneath. So just like I showed you on the last page here, you'll be writing something like, the moral of this story is that, and then combine some of these ideas that we looked at to include there. I can't wait to read your finished stories. I'm really, really excited. I'm sure they're all fantastic. I've been very, very impressed with everything I've seen so far. I've seen some amazing ideas, some really interesting ideas, I've seen some fantastic innovations, some really creative ideas. You're all doing so well, so keep up the fantastic work. Please send them in, either a picture, or if you're feeling brave enough, you could even record yourself reading your story map. I look forward to seeing what you've done, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!